Blackwood Chapter and the Elder Scrolls Online is approaching and you're wondering what to do day one and how to prepare. Great, this is the video for you. Welcome back gang, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. Today I want to share with you what to do on Blackwood launch and before launch to prepare yourself for the next chapter in the Elder Scrolls Online. Keep in mind, regardless if you buy the chapter or not, some of the base game has been adjusted in chain, so you'll want to watch this video in case it applies to you, whether you bought the chapter or not. Break it down in sections with timestamps below if you wish to skip ahead, as well as other important links and related videos. Blackwood is just about here, gang. Let's get started. So you bought the new Blackwood chapter. What do you do? First thing is to travel to the new zone in the main town called Leowin, which is going to be in the southeastern part of your map near Shadowfin. You should also be able to see if you've purchased it via the Crown Store menu in-game. Once you get into the zone, you'll have the standard things to do with a loud and boisterous quest giver just outside of the Way Shrine. My suggestion to you is make unlocking both companions priority number one because they level based off of your experience earned. Meaning, the earlier you get them unlocked and out and start earning experience, the faster they'll level up to endgame and be more useful for you, more impactful. You'll do this by heading north to grab the first companion, Miri, a range-ish Nightblade character that makes a great ranged archer. Though she can be used in any role, and I have a separate video on companions. South, you'll head to grab Bastion, a DK Dragonite-ish character that makes a great tank. Again, they can play and fulfill any role. Each quest will take roughly 15, 30, 45 minutes depending on if you're space barring and or listening to the voice acting, exploring, but this is important because they level up to 20 based on your experience earned. So that means if your priority is to level the companions up as quickly as possible, I suggest farming up some experience scrolls and or drinks to start maximizing that experience gain. On the public test server, I went as far as to take my companion there and to Skyreach grind. I just grinded with my companion in Skyreach and leveled them up very, very quick. So start thinking of ways that you can bring your companion to tag along to earn experience and or doing quest turn-ins that can optimize your experience for them and get them to level 20 right away. Companions are done, now what? I'd recommend exploring the area and or the starter quest and the other two homes if you're into that. By exploring the area Blackwood, you'll eventually run into Oblivion portals. They are visually spectacular, but not that difficult to complete for the average or experienced player. There's various achievements for completing the Oblivion portal and actually a secret achievement by killing a secret boss interacting with some totems inside a special room. And besides the achievements, there's going to be new gear sets that you're going to get by completing these Oblivion portals and opening up chests that can be obtained inside. Also, there is at least one mythic lead inside these Oblivion portals. I want to stress to you one point about the Oblivion portals. Take your time. It really feels like a sense of urgency. You have to go through here and clear these as fast as possible, but in all actuality, you don't. So what you can do is clear them out in stages and then take time exploring and making sure you collect all the loot and find all their treasure chests so you can optimize your time in there. Also keep in mind that these are essentially public dungeons with a cool graphics interface, so you'll have other players inside doing whatever they want independently. I have previous videos on Oblivion portals, but it's always nice to collect new items for the sticker book or be the first to get them up on the guild traders. Now there'll be some hot items, so fill out that sticker book, get them on the guild traders, you never know what's going to be the next meta set. Speaking of meta sets, I suggest getting together a group, either your raid team or a pug group, and trying the new Rock Grove Trial. All the sets inside, literally all of them, are fantastic options for PvP or PvE depending on your role. And again, you're going to want to fill out that sticker book. Things always change in the Elder Scrolls Online and you might as well start collecting it. If you don't have the capability to complete this on Veteran, no worries. Just do the normal version so you can get at least a baseline set of the gear and see if it works for some of your builds. 
Keep in mind, you'll be able to use companions in trials and dungeons at this point. So if you have 11 out of 12 folks, let's say, in your trial, you could always pull out one of the companions and put them as a ranged DPS for a little bit more DPS or fulfill some role for you. So that's not the only gear sets that are coming out. There's new mythics, super powerful mythics to collect. And as of the making of this video, I do not know all the locations of the leads. However, a lot of them, obviously, have been found inside of Blackwood. Some of them obvious locations and activities. Public dungeon bosses, Oblivion Portal final chest, the rural bosses, and so on. So besides having fun exploring the area, you may be the first on the server to discover a lead location. Hype! Check back on my website later as the community learns the locations of all these mythics and we can get to start digging. But it's great incentive to explore the area, have fun, and collect all the new bells and whistles. Speaking of bells and whistles, ESO Base Game has some new things going on. Update 30. My favorite thing that's been added is the Endeavor system, which is essentially daily and weekly rewards for a new currency you can use to buy Crown Store items by playing the game with this currency rather than spending real world money. I have a separate video that details this, but you'll have a new UI interface and it'll show you some daily objectives that you need to complete as well as weekly. You want to start doing these every day that you log in because you can actually earn the Apex mount. So if you plan on playing every day, you're most likely doing this stuff already. Most of the objectives are crafting, dungeons, trials, Cyrodiil, Battleground, etc. You're going to want to check on this tab early during your playthrough and playtime in-game because you might have two out of uh, five tasks complete and you just need to complete one that may take you five or ten minutes. So if you plan on collecting a lot of this new currency, just check on it, get it done, get that daily done if you're logged in anyways because you're probably doing the things already. Next up, we're going to have three new monster helms added to Imperial City area. Can't wait. So yes, you'll need to go into Imperial City and kill the big nasty bosses in order to get their monster helms. This means you need to be prepared for gank warfare. So you're going to need to bring with you, one, a Zerg, two, self detect potions, three, radiant mage light, or camel hunter to detect those pesky gankers. You'll also need to be aware that proc sets and any other gear sets will be enabled in Imperial City, Cyrodiil, or wherever. So throw on your best-in-slot PvP gear and get ready to brawl. Also think about getting a set of Imperial Physique Armor, because if you carry 10,000 or more Telvar Stones on you, you'll be a walking juggernaut with a huge max stats pool. The safest and easiest way i found to kill these monsters are to flip the flags in the district prior to engaging. What you're going to do is pull the boss over to the flags. That way you'll have the NPCs to not only help you with the monster, but in case you get attacked and someone tries to gank you. This is very helpful. Rotate the districts flipping the flags and farming mobs in between the spawn and you'll have a great productive time, assuming you're not getting ganked. Another fantastic addition to the game has been added, especially for those console folks, and that's ability timers in the gameplay settings. Once enabled, it'll look very similar to the PC add-on action duration reminder. So turn that on ASAP if you want more detailed information about cooldowns and timers, as it makes it much easier to manage DPS rotations and buffs. Too long didn't read. Summary. Get your XP scrolls ready to level companions. Make some stealth detection potions and grab Imperial Physique Armor for Imperial City Farming. Explore the new zone and do everything for fun and the chance to get the Mythic Leads. Farm the new gear in the Trial, Oblivion Portals, and the Overland sets in Blackwood. And don't forget to peek in the Endeavor system to start earning that currency. Blackwood is almost here and it'll be reinvigorating for the game. I'll be streaming the launch live on twitch.tv slash deltiasgaming, so join me there if you wish to watch live. I hope you got something out of this video. Please like, subscribe, turn alerts on so you don't miss another one. Thanks for watching.